Right. Okay. The mic reset. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you, Lorcan. Yeah, the mic's not set. What a doozy. There's always something, isn't there? There's always something. Last week, I had a bug with OBS. Well, it wasn't a bug. It was a plug-in I thought would be useful. I love new plugins, but they can be a curse. So I, uh, I added this new plugin to OBS, and it just basically made the thing come to a standstill. So it was like almost impossible to stream. I could stream, but I just couldn't control anything. But um, I just ripped that plug out, ripped the, the plug-in out, deleted it, stamped on it, got rid of it, spat it out, get off my computer, you scum. And suddenly OBS and streaming and everything, smooth back to how it was. And then this week, of course, the mic's been reset because I've been doing different things. Um, anyway, there we go. As ever, what I was saying is uh, we're going to be talking about PlayStation 5 Pro. Uh, we've got details on that because it seems like this thing is happening. It's real. There's some details out there about it. Developers are beginning to get instructions uh, on all of those things. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about Fallout because Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 came to GeForce Now. Um, have you played Fallout before? Now, of course, this is in light of the new TV series, which is getting pretty good reviews. There's a checkered history of video game adaptations in film and TV, and mostly, mostly, they don't work very well. But in fairness, Fallout is getting pretty good uh, reviews and a pretty good reception for a game based for a tv show based on a video game i think partly that's behind you need creative people you need pe talented people behind you know behind the concept uh who know tv you know film rather than just say oh that ip was successful in gaming so uh yeah it'll be successful in film and and not really pay any attention or care to it you need people who understand it and care about it and they've certainly got that it's a jonathan nolan uh, brother of Christopher Nolan, of course, produced um, and directed, first episode directed. Um, and it's it's good. It's good. So I'm enjoying that. So yes, here's my little Fallout Vault guy. You collect these. I literally smashed my bass speaker for my surround sound to... <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that if you've been shaking your speakers or whatever. Anyway, there's my little Volt guy, Volt Tech guy. Forget where I picked that up. Put him over there in the background. Um, yeah, I remember playing Fallout 76. And uh, it's one of those Bethesda games where... And I had the same problem with Starfield where you can't carry too much and it feels like I'm hardly carrying anything. And it says, Oh, you're carrying too much. You too, you know, so you're just walking around really slowly and it's like, well, I don't really want to get rid of anything. I hate managing my bloody, lo you know, load out. It's a pain in the ass anyway. And, um, so I missed out on the previous fallout and fallout four, uh, which is meant to be the better of the games. It's eight years old fallout four. Uh, but I might give it a go. Uh, anyway, but as I said, let me know what games you've been playing this week, even if I can't remember in my old age what games I've been playing this week because they were that amazing. Um, but let me know in the chat down below, as I was saying, and I don't know if I said it before because this is the Monday Game Chat. It's Monday. It's about games. You're the chat. It all makes sense. Anyway. So why don't we just talk about, uh, yeah, There's a, here's the, in Time magazine here talking about Fallout. Just checking there, it sounds not up there. Yeah, there's, there's the bubble guy. Anyway. 
Talks about here, Fallout quite cleverly straddles the line between ultra-violent, it is ultra-violent, <laughs> it's full of ultra-violence, oh my God, and prestige series. It's interesting, actually, that's very acute. I was just watching the first episode and that's exactly it. <laughs> it wavers between a kind of real prestige, well-developed, beautiful, produced-looking series and a ultra-violent exploitation pick. Um, and I guess that sort of a, appeals to the gamers, that kind of ultra-violence element, at the same time being a kind of Amazon Prime series and stuff uh, and all of that. But as I said earlier, um, came on, of course, on GeForce Now. And now got perfect, perfect excuse to play because Fallout seventy six I think is in on Xbox um, on Xbox Game Pass. Fallout four I don't think is. I should be. I have to check it out. I'm not sure it is. Anyway, so yes, here we are. GeForce Now this week. Bethesda's Fallout titles join GeForce Now. Embark on the journey through the ruins of post-apocalyptic Commonwealth in Fallout 4 as the sole survivor of Vault 111. Navigate a world destroyed by nuclear war, make choices to reshape the wasteland and rebuild society one settlement at a time. So I'm looking forward to giving it another go. Um, on uh, Now it's on GeForce Now. And with the TV series, I'm inspired. I'm inspired. It was like the four things that go wonky and I lost it. Oh, no. I started Bully on the Wii. Bully on the Wii? Was it ever released on the Wii? I didn't know that. And played Atari. I tell you what, talking about playing Atari, I was watching a few YouTube videos about um, a guy who bought a faulty arcade machine and then repaired it, fixed it. I kind of quite like watching a few of these sort of fix-it videos. Not that I understand anything they're talking about but you know it's interesting when people revive old tech that's you know somebody's given up on because you know it's got a power fault or something like that and then they solve it but anyway it got me inspired to you know, to me thinking about buying a, an arcade cabinet again for the, my my setup here although don't tell the uh, don't tell the other half don't tell my partner she's just spent the last 12 months decluttering and uh, conmarrying my whole uh, place. But I'm thinking, get myself an arcade cabinet again. Anyway. I never played Fallout. It looks my kind of game. Yes, Bully was released on Wii and I'm very impressed. I wonder if, yes, yeah, so, um, Rockstar will ever re-release -re Bully. There's always, there's always these constant rumours about Bully 2 in the offing, but I don't think it'll ever um, transpire personally. I've got a pile of Wii games, which uh, I'm unfortunately, and look, I don't want to upset you, Jerome, but they're probably going to end up in the tip. Um, as part of, ironically, well, not ironically, uh, adding to, as I said, the whole kind of clearing out my clutter because they're clutter at the moment. Should I keep them? I don't know. See, Nintendo should do... I mean, my kids have got a Switch, but on their store, do they have a lot of the Wii games? I know, I know, I know. It's shocking, Jerome. Do they have a lot of the Wii games? If they've got digital versions of the Wii games... I mean, the only Wii games I'm interested in are the ones specifically that were maybe, you know, our, our Nintendo's specific or you know or exclusive to the Wii or something like that keep them he goes I'm sure they'll work I've still got my Wii I made sure that wasn't thrown away nearly I grabbed it no I said no definitely not talking about old games and retro games and of course as I always, I always like to have a sort of random link to uh, 
Stadia. Yeah, just for old time's sake. Well, do you remember? Do you remember? 64 Pac-Man Battle Royale, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it was exclusive to Stadia. Uh, and it was, a, it was a hell of fun. It was great fun. Well, ladies and gentlemen. 64 Pac-Man Battle Royale Chomp Chomp Champs escapes the grave of Google Stadia. All right, rock, paper, shotgun, steady. Onto Steam next week. Remember when, this is from Matt Jarvis. Remember when Pac-Man got its own Battle Royale game where 64 Pac people compete, uh, competed to eat each other and be the Chomp Chomp Champ, the Chomp Champ, me neither. Well, that's hardly, look, you're a gaming, PC gaming since 1873, very amusing. Rock, paper, sh shotgun, right? A gaming journalist. And he goes, remember when Pac-Man got its own Battle Royale game? Me neither. Don't get me started on those old gaming journalists and stadia anyway but pac-man mega pac-man mega tunnel battle apparently ca apparently apparently came on stadia like he like he didn't know yeah what have you been a you've been a gaming correspondent for a gaming blog for what 12 months only are you a noob are you the uh, office junior yeah are you the work experience guy? I mean, you might not like Stadia, but at least at least know your stuff. It was, uh, you know, part of the gaming arena for all be for a brief uh, time. I'd like to say it shone bright and short, but I, it didn't really shine bright, but it was short. Um, anyway, me neither, but Pac-Man Mega... Tunnel Battle apparently came out on Google Stadia. Oh, that'd be why. Back in 2020. And served up a massively multiplayer spin on the arcade classic. With Stadia dead and buried. Thank you. Mega Tunnel. Rest in peace. Mega Tunnel Battle is chewing its way out of the streaming console's grave with a new subtitle and a fresh Steam release next month. It's going to be called... Oh, look. Here's... Um, I'll play the trailer, not with the music, because I'll probably get... I mean, I'm going to listen to the music. Hopefully the music's not playing. Yeah, anyway. So it's back with a new name. Chomp Champs. Uh, and you can pre-order it now from Bandai Namco. Of course it is, ladies and gentlemen. I remember the cowboy... Used to love, used to challenge everyone to uh, a Pac-Man challenge. Pre-order now. Oh, oh. Actually, look, it's not just Steam. Uh, you see, look, the rock, paper, scissors show. I guess it is a PC blog. Yeah, PC piece. But look, so it will land on Steam on May the 8th. 16 pounds, but also PlayStation 5 and 4, Xbox, just Xbox, it's not saying Xbox Series X, Xbox, old school Xbox, a bit weird, Steam and Nintendo Switch. I wonder if it'll find its way, if it's on Steam, I wonder... There are a few Bandai Namco titles on GeForce Now. I wonder if it will make its way to GeForce Now. That'd be great to play in the cloud again. Albeit, you know, if it's on Steam. Pac-Man is back. Yep. Anyway, I remember it on Stadia. It was great. So I'm, I'm looking forward... 
uh, to to this coming back. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it comes back on GeForce Now. It was a lot of fun, I agree. It was a great Pac-Man. It was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. agree on that one. I'm on the wrong channel there. Let me just... Uh... Nope. Too many bloody YouTube channels. That's my problem. Right. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about... Um, oh, Jerome says he'd definitely buy it again. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy it again. Well, of course. You don't have to buy it. Remember, you got refunded. It was... Uh, actually, it was... No, it was part of... Was it? I think it was part of Stadia Pro, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was part of Stadia Pro. So, um, but if you did buy it, you would have getting tangled up here. If you if you did buy it, you would have been refunded. Anyway, let's talk PlayStation Five. I don't talk much about PlayStation on this show, you know, because I sort of tend to lean towards Xbox and um, cloud gaming. But there's been uh, rumours for a while of obviously the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 5 Pro. Um, and here we go. This is a Tom from The Verge. Who else? Sony's PlayStation 5 Pro is real and the developers are getting ready for it. Sony is asking developers to get games ready over the summer. So it looks like come the big gaming season the beginning of june where we get all the um the big gaming announcements and the showcases it looks like they might be gearing up for that sony is asking developers to get games ready over the summer with a push for ray tracing support sony's getting ready to release a more powerful playstation 5 console possibly by the end of this year after reports of a leaked playstation 5 pro specs surfaced the Verge has obtained, you can sort of trust The Verge, The Verge has obtained a full list of specs for the upcoming console. Sources familiar with Sony's plans tell me that developers already, obviously they need to start um, making those changes and you probably need a good 12 to 6 months to um, add the enhancements probably to existing games are already being asked to ensure their games are compatible with the upcoming console with a focus on improving ray tracing. Codenamed Trinity, the PlayStation 5 Pro model will include a more powerful GPU, slightly faster CPU, and all Sony's changes point to a PlayStation 5 Pro that will be far more capable of rendering games with ray tracing enabled or hitting higher resolution and frame rates in certain titles. Sony appears to be encouraging developers to use graphic features like ray tracing more with the PS5 Pro. With games able to use a Trinity enhanced label if they provide significant enhancements. Rendering on the PlayStation 5 Pro is about be meant to be about 45% faster than the PS5. And the PS5 Pro GPU will be larger and use faster system memory to help improve ray tracing in games. And also using a more powerful ray tracing architecture. It is a high-end version of PlayStation 5, which was expensive enough. Does that just mean they're going to drop the price of PlayStation 5 and then bring the PlayStation 5 Pro in at the current price of the PlayStation 5? Or expect you to pay more. Anyway, it seems that test kits are available for developers now. With games submitted to certification in August for compatibility with PS5 Pro. And you can read all about the details there. And uh, Tom is speculating here. I fully expect to see the PlayStation 5 Pro launch this holiday season i.e. over, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas. And it appears to be following the same playbook as a PS4 with a slim PS5 model 
and then a pro edition. All ah, right. So, yeah. Does that mean that they'll reduce the price of the PlayStation 5 and introduce the slimmer, slim down model? Tempted. And then, as I said, offer the PlayStation 5 Pro at the current rates. Will games utilize and maximize the Pro? Well, that's the thing. They, If they do, they get a little stamp saying, you know, Trinity approved or whatever it is. There we go. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below um, on all your comments. Hey, Al Davis, good to see you in the chat there, uh, as ever. Thank you for joining us. Right, so there we go. That was a great thing about Stadia. Everyone has equality. Exactly. It was, it was the utopia, Jerome. It was a utopia. Right, ladies and gentlemen. I just read some interesting um, stuff about Sea of Thieves, uh, which, of course, is launching on PlayStation 5. Um, following the beta. So there was... Um, there's been a beta test of PlayStation of the PlayStation version of Sea of Thieves. And it's one of the most pre-ordered games. So this whole strategy of Xbox making one of their Xbox exclusives available on PlayStation 5 is going to do... Um, it's certainly going to do rare, no end of good. But it's going um, to... They, it looks like they're going to sell bucket loads. It looks like... PlayStation 5 players can't wait to don their tricorns and raise anchor. Sea of Thieves is currently experiencing longer wait times than normal, according to developer Rare, thanks to high volume of new players joining as part of today's freshly launched PlayStation 5 closed beta. So this is just the closed beta. They're going to have to up their servers and stuff like that. The interesting thing is this is goes just to go to show the testament of sea of thieves in the light of course U the mighty ubisoft's skull and bones yet yeah, it's sea of thieves that playstation 5 users are clamoring for by the looks of things a seeming surge of freshly minted pirates is causing a bit of a server blip with Rare having to take to social media to warn that the PlayStation 5 closed beta is currently experience, experiencing a high volume of new players. I didn't even know they were doing a, a beta version of it. But there is a whole shed load of new content. And I've, I, um, I did see the content reveal that uh, Sea of Thieves are bringing over the next 12 months. And it's going to be a bumper year, as it says here. Season 12 is just a small part of what's shaping up to be a bumper year for Sea of Thieves. And um, yeah, so PlayStation 5 players, you are, if you, you know... You are in for a treat, ladies and gentlemen. You are in for a treat. I can tell you that much. Jerome says, I wonder what Gen 2 of Stadia would have been like. Well, of course, it would just be called Stadia. Uh, they would just upgrade the servers, just I imagine. They just like GeForce Now, they up, you know, they introduced their GeForce Now Ultimate, and that was a 3080. And then they within 12 to 13 months, they soon upgraded that to a 4080. Now, I guess that's what Stadia would have done. They just would have upgraded the servers in this in the same way. I still always remember when I was doing the Stadia Monday Night Chat, there was a constant, is it Gen 2? Is it Gen 2? Like any anything, just, just like, is it Gen 2? 
Is it Gen 2? I used to get right, I used to get right on my nerves. Oh, yeah, it's Gen 2. Is it Gen 2? It's like, don't call it Gen 2. That's like old school talk. Stadia was Stadia. And that, that was the beauty. That's what, that's what annoyed me because it's not like changing a console. Like GeForce Now Ultimate is GeForce Now Ultimate. At one point, it was 3080s. You know, RTX 3080s. Right? When they introduced GeForce Now Ultimate, it was an RTX 3080. Super pods. And then they just upgraded it to 4080. RTX 4080s. Super pods. But it was cool. Still cool. GeForce Now Ultimate. So I think the same would have been with Stadia. And, and this idea, oh, is it like, you know, that somehow Gen 2 is, is the next console version, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm sure Stadia... Um, the Gen 2 of Stadia, as you say there, Jerome, the upgrade of Stadia would have been would have been very interesting. If it had had the backing, as we know it needed, and support of the, you know, Google and Alphabet, I'm sure they would have tried to keep pace or stay ahead of what GeForce Now are doing. Yeah, imagine if they, you know, if Google had been taking Stadia more seriously and had backed it, Seeing what GeForce Now did in leapfrogging what made Stadia unique in the fact that it was, you know, 4K, 60 frames per second, cloud gaming, never heard of. Like, it was like, what? It was like, wow, 4K, 60 frames per second, you're having a laugh. But now, you know, two years later, with it, well, actually within 12 months of Stadia closing... You had GeForce Now Ultimate 4080 up to 120 frames per second, 4K. So they would have had to keep pace, wouldn't they, of that, ultimately. That would have been the key thing. Anyway, so it's interesting. Anyway, back to Sea of Thieves. Um, it's interesting that there is a real demand for it, especially, as I said, in the light of Skull and Bones. So... Uh -uh. That's Ubisoft and, you know, really dropped a... I say, I want to drop a ball on that, didn't they, really? Talking of Ubisoft, of course, there was the trailer. Um, last week, Star Wars Outlaws with a bit more detail. pre-order it now there's some there's some bonkers editions of star wars um here we are look star wars outlaws ultimate edition Hundred and fifteen quid what what do you get you get the base game i should think so pre-order bonus Cosmetic pack for your speeder. Okay, you get some cosmetic stuff. Three-day early access. Season pass. Okay. Rogue, a bundle. Okay, you've just more... Yeah. Oh, and you get an art book. And it's included in Ubisoft. What? So you get the... Oh, yeah, it's a digital art book. So if you subscribe... Uh, to Ubisoft Plus, then you get the Ultimate Edition, which is worth 115 quid. Unbelievable. Captured in uh, engine, not all images. I mean, obviously... Uh, Ubisoft always, they love a good sort of trailer, Ubisoft, don't they? They love a trailer when you really want to see the gameplay rather than sort of cutscenes, even if the cutscenes are generated in the game engine. I mean, I don't doubt it. It's developed on the Snowdrop engine, and we know how good that is with... Um... Oh, brain's gone dead. What's it, too? Um, 
and Avatar and stuff like that. And it's got a kind of open world Red Dead, um, Red Dead Redemption GTA kind of um, gameplay system to it in the fact that the decisions you make will impact on your main character and stuff like that, um, apparently. So in the same way in Red Dead Redemption, you know, you sort of have certain moral decisions that you might take throughout the game and stuff like that. And it's going to impact how um, people interact with you and stuff like that, apparently. Um, but anyway, yeah. The first ever open world Star Wars game set between the events of The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Explore distinct, distinct planets across galaxy. I wonder how you travel through the planets. As K Vess, a scoundrel seeking freedom and the means to start a new life, along with a companion Nyx. Fight, steal, and outwit your way through the galaxy's crime syndicates. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Let me know. Engage in dogfights as well. That's what we want. So you got a story mode, you got high stakes missions, you've got dogfights. Yeah. And then there's a season pass. Yeah, definitely looking for that. I finished the quarry on Game Pass this week. Would have been great with crowd choice on Stadia. What could have been? Ah, well, there are there decisions to make in the quarry. Then Al Davis, is that how it works? What should I do? Yeah, of course that was wasn't that one of the games? Well, the developer was working with Stadia, wasn't it? Is that right? Super massive, was it? And then two, yeah, super massive games. Super massive, though. Unfortunately, went didn't they make some redundancies? Guildford. Uh, super massive games. Yeah. Oh yeah, they lay off nine. They laid off ninety staff, about thirty percent. That was it. Yeah, that's a shame. Thirty percent of their workforce. When was this? This is uh, yeah, back in February, end of February, March, only a month ago. But they were one of um, yeah, talking of Stadia. Of course, they were one of Stadia's partners as it were in terms of um one of the developers that were on this website and they're working with and so of course we didn't we don't know exactly what game they were working on they did up i think they did the port for little nightmares oddly enough weirdly enough i'm sure they did for stadia now i don't know whether that was a sort of a practice run and they were it was all al all along that the quarry was going to come to stadia because when Stadia shut down, the next thing we knew is that 2K, the publisher, had come in for the quarry, I seem to remember. So the chances are, yeah, it could have been a Stadia title and a Stadia exclusive title. Um, I definitely think that was a speculation back in the day, but there we go. As cool as that game looks, it's getting harder to separate a game from the rest. Exactly. To be honest, you're right. I, I agree with you, Jerome, there. It other than, of course, the world, you you know, you're familiar with the world and the sort of the ship, the style of the ships and the gunplay and, you know, whether there'll be any lightsabers and stuff like that. But so they can sort of save a bit on character build. I mean, obviously, she's an independent character, but world building, that's it. They can sort of save a bit of time on the world building. Obviously, you know, they're going to create new worlds, but it's in the style. The creative design style is obviously in the style of Star Wars. So that kind of saves a lot of time. That's what I was thinking, actually, watching the TV series of Fallout. That one of the reasons I think it kind of works is it's a great concept. Like 1950s America or kind of alternate 
an alternative 1950s America frozen in a capsule and then opened up, you know, 200 years later. Uh, as a concept, it's quite a good concept, quite a good story base in a post-apocalyptic world. So I think that makes for a good story, personally. But yeah, you're right about Outlaws. It It's, oh, look, another open world game. But the, you know, and why the beauty is, as I said, it's a... a star wars world but other than that that's the that's the thing that that's the only thing that's going to sort of set it uh set it apart um but i you know that's fine i like a you know i like a bit of a star wars world so i'll be jumping in when it comes out it's rumored to be coming out at the end of um march not in march august Doing bonkers me today. Star Wars Outlaws will see us swapping out lightsabers for blaster guns in this franchise first open world game. Uh, has fast become one of the most anticipated new games for 2024. I know it's on Twitter. I, mean, I shouldn't even mention it, but on Twitter you've got these twitter nuts moaning because it's a female character that's not you know doesn't look isn't running around in a bikini it looks like stella blade and therefore they're refusing to play it i mean what are these people on but i don't know what they're on they're probably they're on no i won't say that but anyway what you know they're in their mum's basement aren't they anyway Officially confirmed, the Star Wars Outlaws release date will be August the 30th and available on PS5, PC and Xbox Series X and, of course, on GeForce Now. So there we go. But I absolutely agree. Tougher to impress nowadays. But I, I do like a good story, a, a, a single-player story um, to get my teeth into. So, yeah, I'm up for it. I'm up for doing it. Um... Let me know in the chat there. And as I said, let's just have a look at the latest and tr trending news in the gaming world. Apparently, um, Fallout 4, talking of Fallout 4, is getting a next gen update. Hot on the heels of the release. Maybe I should wait for the next gen update. Bethesda's finally announced a release date for the long-awaited Fallout 4 next-gen update. The free upgrade for the post-apocalyptic open world launches on April the 25th. Okay, 10 days away. And includes native applications for the consoles, performance mode and quality mode settings. This means the game will be playable up to 60 frames per second. It's funny, on some comments on my GeForce Now video with people going, oh, it's locked. It's locked at 60 frames per second, even on GeForce Now Ultimate, I think. It's locked at 60 frames per second, so they're moaning. I mean, what? It's a, it's a sort of a narrative single-player game, isn't it? Uh, a free Fallout 4 update for PC adds widescreen and ultra-screen support. As well. Okay. So that's interesting. They're doing an upgrade of Fallout. There are rumours, of course, of Fallout 5. But that won't come until after ne Bethesda's next game. So that wouldn't be until like 26, 2026, 27. I mean, that's crazy, isn't it? It's rumoured that Keanu Reeves will voice Shadow in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. It's reportedly, yeah. Multiple sources have confirmed the casting to the outlet. 
Keanu, Re- Keanu Reeves will reportedly be the voice of Shadow. Interesting. Joining Idris Elba and Jim Carrey. Oh, there we are. We got all you got all the ladies. That's why you come here. You get you get the, the top news, ladies and gentlemen. You get the top news. I'm just making sure that we've caught all the detail. On the uh, on the gaming front. There's a lot of articles cashing in on the whole Fallout um, activity and around the TV show and about what game, which Fallout game you need to play while you wait for season two. And most of it is to play Fallout 4. So if you are inter- if you want to know what Fallout game you should be playing, definitely play Fallout 4. I found Fallout 76 world a bit empty and a little bit confusing. And of course, the whole problem of, like I said earlier, of having to carry too much stuff or not being able to carry too much stuff um, as it turns out. I was just checking. There's a whole new um, grounded, fully yoked edition uh, on Xbox Game Pass. Also available on Steam, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5. Grounded, fully yoked edition features all previously released content updates, along with new Ant Queens, new game, plus mode and new gear. My son plays it with the... Because he's got a thing about spiders. Oh, my God. So you can, there's an option to turn the spiders off. And they just become a, like a blob, like a round circle, I think. Um, yeah, so that. So that is sort of spider. Um, yeah, so it's sort of an arachnophobia version of it. Surely that's the fun. I must admit, um, I, I knocked down my shed. I've got like a big shed in the garden and uh, my son and I demolished it so many spiders and I saw um and he he like he'll go oh even if he sees a dead spider he's going there's a dead spider there I'm going he's dead he goes I know like he I said look you're massive you my son is as tall as I am I go what's what's your problem I just don't like spiders dad fair enough but like um I saw, good job he wasn't there. I saw absolutely, I saw the biggest UK spider I've ever seen. I've seen bigger spiders, obviously, because I've been to the zoo, you know. I've seen foreign spiders, you know, from from hot countries where, you, you know, spiders are big. But in the UK, although we have about 800 species of spider, they're pretty small some have got like some small bodies and long legs and they're all 99 percent of them harmless there's nothing really major the worst spider out there is the false widow looks like a widow spider it can nip you as well but uh it's not a widow spider thank god it's not australia but it's a false widow and they're really obvious and they're quite rare but when you see them i've seen having said that i've seen a couple in my garden they're, and I thought, because they're not like your normal garden spiders or your normal house spiders, uh, which we get, which are fine. They're just small things. Um, you know, I can pick them up my hand, put them out. But anyway, and sometimes you see big spiders, but they're like quite sort of spindly bodies and really spindly long legs. And again, they're not, you know, that like size of a 50 p. I know you wouldn't know what I like. A, a size of a dollar coin biggest you know like a a, you know a dollar coin or something about that you know that big tops biggest spider with but spindly but i saw this spider i've never seen one like it before in the uk and it had a fat body not a long spindly one with spindly legs that made it seem bigger than it was it was like a fat 
round bob body the size of a big marble like and i thought oh my god that's a proper spider and it scuttled away under the dilapidated shed that i just collapsed in a heap in the garden i'd certainly be wearing my gloves when i uh put put that put it all in the skip put it that way spiders are scary they freak me out yeah i sort of yeah they are freaky i get it as long as they're not in the house well come september it's it's rotting season isn't it for the old spiders it's getting a bit chilly and um you know they come in the house well actually no they don't come into the house they're already in the house i hate to freak you out most spiders already in the house um but they don't feel inclined to come out until it gets chilly and they're desperate for food and stuff and then they come out so usually about september they look or they're looking for a mate and they come out round about september so unless you start filling up every little tiny hole in your house apparently um yeah just keep hoovering away makes you wonder what that fat back spider eats exactly exactly that yeah outside's one thing but yeah inside yeah quick glass over the top piece of paper quick open the door and then run down the stairs and flick it off like that get off that's what i do anyway anyway there you go ladies and gentlemen not not necessarily a bumper edition of uh gaming news this week it can't always be a bumper edition but um some interesting uh news about as i say about playstation 5 pro star wars outlaws and of course fallout the tv which i uh show which i'm going to go and watch episode two uh now episode one sort of bit is char- is just establishing the characters and I'm not familiar with it. I'm familiar with the world and, and the setup, but not the characters because I never played the original Fallout games, only Fallout 76, which I wasn't a massive fan of, although I did play a lot, put a lot of hours into it. But, um, yeah, I want to thank you for uh, joining me live. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And uh, it's much appreciated as ever. And I'll be back same place, same time next week. And, of course, I'll have the GeForce Now news on Thursday and all of that. And, of course, ladies and gentlemen, um, I hope you enjoy my little outro. Watching the Monday Game Chat with your host, Clive Illenden. I just can't. You've been watching, you've been watching, you've been watching with me. Express that like share around and don't forget subscribe i just can't you've been watching you've been watching keep on watching oh please